I was just listening to a teaching on the radio by a, a faith teacher. He's known for that. That was his number one subject, always teaching about faith and, and the attitude he presents is that all you got to do is have enough faith. And so he'll read some scripture and an account uh, of Jesus doing a miracle on someone's behalf when they when they make a request for this miracle and he he'll break down the sentences and illustrate that for instance one man said in, in, in this guy's opinion basically I know you can but will you so the reason why the Lord did was because the guy said I know you can the only thing he wasn't sure of is would he that's interesting because I believe such things and, and more than that, I've really wanted to believe such things because I thought, at least in my past life, that, well, if I could just somehow figure out how to believe like that, and that's how we were taught in the building always, you need to believe, you need to have faith. If you just believe more, your life would be better, things would get better, and you could give us more money or whatever it is that would happen. And I was trying to figure out in a literal sense what to me is more accurate. Because to me, I don't know what that sounds like to you, but to me that, that sounds silly to just say, just will in your own self, in your own determination, just will more faith. And they say, no, no, it's the spirit that does it. Well, if it's the spirit that does it, then you can't decide because the spirit of God is not your will. That's an oxymoron to say, well, just, just decide. Well, what other decision can God do with the right decision if that's the spirit that's living within you? So it's clearly fleshy people telling other fleshy people how to generate a spiritual event, an actual miracle. They're, they're not saying those words, but in reality, they're preaching and teaching that one from the power of their flesh would generate spiritual miracles and spiritual actions i thought in a more practical sense an example of faith would be you say you walk into a room and there's several people and there's several chairs and no one's sitting in one of them the, the first person that sits in a chair the one of the legs breaks and it falls down and you look at that and say well i don't know if i want to take a shot at any of those other chairs they all look like that one and and that one fell and and the way religion would describe that is a person who has no faith Probably the person who sat down didn't have faith because if they did have faith, the chair wouldn't have broken and fell down. So it was their fault anyway. But what I believe is that the person observing determines their faith by what they see. That's the whole point of, of what do we believe in, or it goes to the point of what we believe in. When we look at Jesus and we really see him for who he is and what he's done, it only makes sense to have faith in that, to believe in that. Because the other illustration I thought of was, well, how did Jesus generate faith? How did he have the faith to do these things? And they say, well, geez, Mark, I mean, he was God, come on. But he said he didn't do anything, except he saw the Father do it first. He didn't say anything. It was all the Father, the Father's works. So in effect, he was showing us the way one would operate if they knew perfectly in their being that God was dwelling within them. So if you say Jesus executed things perfectly because he had the perfect faith of knowing that God was in him, he was the very vessel of God. And he, so he could say things like at the, at the tomb of Lazarus, he said, I, I thank thee, Father, for I know that you hear me always. He knew that because he, he was in perfect communion. Then you say, well, all you got to do is just believe like him because, hey, you have the Holy Spirit, right? That's all you got to do is just believe like Jesus did. But then there's a problem with that because then that's basically saying you are Jesus. So then th there is no struggle because you have God and you are God because you have this perfect power of God in you to do whatever it is you will. But he said, not my will, but thine be done. So 
is faith really willing something to happen because you have such great faith or is faith just trusting that the right decision will be made even though you may have a desire for this or that you trust the one who's going to do the right thing every single time and the difference between us and him being that because we aren't very God in the flesh we're still going to do all kinds of things and everything we do isn't going to be perfect because we're still individuals and that might indicate that he wants us to be individuals he wants us to trust in him but still live our own lives name the animals what we will name them so to speak as Adam did to just go ahead and live our lives having faith that we're not alone and that he's with us and that when there is a big decision to be made we can pray to him and trust that he will work the right decision just like he said that will be done in Jesus name